morning we're going to be in the book of Luke <laughs> for the last year and a half. We've been in the book of Luke, right? <laughs> so it's no surprise that we're in Luke this morning, Luke 18, Luke 18, starting at uh, verse 31. Luke 18, starting at verse 31, the title this morning is Do Not Be Afraid. Amen. Do Not Be Afraid. We realize that our God is everlasting. We realize that our God is a rock. Not only is he a rock, but he is the cornerstone. He is the rock that everything is built upon. Jesus Christ is his name. We realize that um, we need to not be afraid and cross over now and go into that territory that you may think is scary and you may be right, but the time is now to go and to seek the Lord and to go with the Lord through this trial too. Through this trial too. Amen? Let's look at the book of Luke and discover Jesus in this book and what he was about to go through. Luke 18, verse 31 through 34. <clears throat> Talking to the 12 disciples or taking the 12 disciples aside, Jesus said, listen, <laughs> listen, we, we're going up to Jerusalem where all the predictions of the prophets concerning the Son of Man will come true. He, meaning I, Jesus, will be handed over to the Romans, and he will be mocked, treated shamefully, and spat upon. They, the Romans, will flog him with a whip, and they will kill him. But on the third day, he will rise again. But they didn't understand any of this. <laughs> they didn't understand any of this. Wow. The significance of his words was hidden from them, and they failed to grasp what he was talking about. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. There comes a time in life, there comes a time in life where you can't understand what is happening to you. You just don't get it. You, when you can't understand where you are, not necessarily physically, like, you know, we're here, like I said this morning, <laughs> you know, I was glad when they said, in, go to the house of the Lord and we are what? Here. We're here. We're in his house. So I'm not talking about physically, but I'm talking about emotionally. Emotionally. You say, how did I get here? How did I get to this place? You may think to yourself, why didn't I see the signs? I must have been blind. You may even blame God. You put me here. It was that woman that you gave me, Lord. She did this to me. I'm not talking about you guys specifically. I'm talking about Adam and Eve, right? And the woman then turns to the, it was the snake. Really, they're blaming God. It was the snake that you put here. It was the woman that you put here. Why didn't you warn me, God? How did it come to this? Or even why didn't I believe that this was coming? What happened? But you know what? The truth is God could have been warning you all along. He could have. He, maybe you weren't listening. <laughs> maybe you weren't seeing or hearing or even smelling the signs. Maybe you did not believe that it could happen to you. 
Or maybe, like the disciples here in our passage this morning, the truth was crowded by ambition and what you thought was going to happen, even according to the scripture. It was, it's supposed to be like this. And, and you can't see the light because of the clouds of your ambition and the stuff gets in the way so you're like, I can't even see what it's supposed to be. I can't even see what it's supposed to be because my mind is somewhere else. He is to be the king right now. What do you mean you about to be flogged? Okay, maybe he's talking about something else, somebody else, because he keeps on referring to himself in the third person. What's going on here? The son of man, the son of man? Are you talking about yourself, Jesus? Or is there somebody else that we should be looking for? Like the, like the, uh, the apostles of John came to Jesus. You remember they came to Jesus and they said, are you the guy or are we supposed to be looking for somebody else? That's my interpretation of what the scripture said. Or are you the cat? You're the one, right? And what did Jesus say? Uh, you see, the blind see, the, you know, the sick become healthy. You see people following me. You know, go and tell John what's happening. The signs are right before you. They're right there. But the disciples, but the disciples, Luke 18, verse 34, we return to the scripture. They didn't understand any of this. <laughs> they didn't get it. The significance of his words was hidden from them. What was hiding? Their ambition. Jesus, you're going to be the, you're the Messiah, right? And so you're the, you're the king of kings, right? You're going to be high and lifted up now. And people are going to worship you. And, and we're going to be sitting at your right and left. And we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be, I, me, 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 I. Right? Ambition. The word was hidden from them and they failed to grasp what he was talking about. But this, you see, we, we think about, oh, okay, well, this is the first time Jesus is saying this, even in the book of Luke. No, it wasn't the first time that he was predicting his death. Look at this. They didn't, they didn't know what was going to happen to their rabbi, to their friend. Luke 9, verse uh, 21 to 22. Right? Just, uh, just nine chapters over. It says this. So Jesus warned here he goes. Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. Right? This time he was, he was just instructing them. He was telling them how to be, how to live in this world and giving them instructions and building them up. He was, he was being their rabbi. He was discipling them. They were disciples. They were apprentices of Jesus Christ as we are here today. And Jesus warned his disciples not to tell anyone who he was. Verse 22, the son of man must suffer many terrible things, he said. He will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He will be killed. He says it right there to them. Chapters Later, you know, he keeps on saying this. And in other books, he, he says it even many more times. But on the third day, he even predicts the resurrection. On the third day, he will be raised from the dead. Come on, guys. And they're looking at him. What? What are you talking about? No, 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 no. No, no, no. You're supposed to be. This is, this is who you are, Jesus, in my mind. You're supposed to get the sword. We'll see later that, you know, he doesn't, get a, he doesn't get a sword or anything. He just gets a lowly donkey. He's supposed to get a horse, right? And ride in like the conquering king to go into Jerusalem, the Roman city, and conquer and defeat. But he comes in. This is weird. 
<laughs> I could so, so, hey, all right, what I want you to do is go get me a, a, a little donkey that has never been ridden on before. And the disciples say, what? You want a what? A donkey. Are you sure? Yeah, not even, not even a big, full-grown donkey. A little donkey. Right? So I can ride on him as we go into Jerusalem. Are you sure, Pastor? Are you, are you sure, Pastor? Are you sure that's what you want? Yes, that's what I want. You don't want a big horse? We got a big horse. He's white. He's got garb on it. He's ready to go. He's been through battles. We got a big old horse. Lord, Lord, Father, come on. Go get me the donkey. <laughs> okay, Jesus, whatever you say. He warned the disciples. Look, Luke 9, verse 34b to 45. While everyone was marveling at everything he was doing, Jesus said to his disciples, again, listen to me and remember what I say. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies, but they didn't know what he meant. The same book, same book, Luke. Its significance was hidden from them so they couldn't understand it, and they were what? Afraid. They were afraid to ask him about it. We see that fear there coming in. They were afraid to ask him what was going on. Have you been in that place before where you, where you say, oh, uh, I know what's coming, but I don't want to ask about it because that scares the bejeebies out of me. I am scared, God. I am afraid to ask what I'm thinking right now. Don't you think that the disciples were like, well, he keeps on talking about dying. And they're looking at him. You can tell them they're all, <laughs> how many ever there were, you know, there were, there were more disciples around than the 12. You know, there were people that was like, didn't you hear him say, hey, Peter, didn't you hear him say that he was going to die? I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about his death. Okay, I'll go to John. John, didn't you see today? I'm a son of thunder. We're ready to go in battle. We're, we're, we're going to go with you, Lord, to die? No, 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 no. You're not going to die. And they, were, they started to be afraid. They heard it. They heard the words, you see? They heard the words, but they started to be afraid. What do you mean, Jesus? I'm afraid to ask the question. Are you talking about yourself? I know that I would do it. I know that I would be like, I'm not going to ask that stupid question because the guy's going to come after me. I think he said that he was going to die. Shut your mouth, fool. <laughs> He's not going to die, <laughs> right? I think that's what he said. Shut up. You know, start beating him in. Put him in the corner. <laughs> you know, lock him up in the back room. You see, um, I worry about the future. I fear what could happen. Sometimes I, I don't want to know what things are going to happen to me. I don't want to know it. To my family. To my friends to my church, I just, oh my God, help me. I don't want to know. To my world, you know. You feel the same way sometimes? I try to hide myself from the truth. I try to hide myself from the truth. I put my head in the ground thinking if I can't. <laughs> that was perfect, Finney. I put my head in the ground thinking if I can't hear it, if I can't smell it, if I can't see it, then it maybe isn't happening to me like an ostrich. As we look at this picture, you see the sign right there. If you can't see the words, it says, danger, high voltage. And look where he's putting his head. Right there. 
Is this you at times? Trying to hide from the truth? But no matter how you try to hide from the truth, it's going to happen to you. Every place you try to hide your head could be the most dangerous place for you. Being hidden and not acknowledging the truth, even if you're afraid, is danger. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Danger. So, with this, what does God tell us in the Bible the most out of anything? Do not be what? Afraid. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. Raise your head up. Get it out of the sand. Do not be afraid is is mentioned over 365 times in the Bible. Over 365 times, God tells us in different ways in the Old Testament and the New Testament not to be afraid. And when you add the other books, the other books that we, it's more than that. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And I looked it up, you know, I I just put in a Google search. I I know these things, so I just kind of write. But every once in a while, I'll do like just a Google search to see what the world thinks. Right? (laughs) And so... I, I, this quote popped up, and it was, it was really cool. It says, we can't, we can, excuse me, we can be afraid or nervous walking into a new chapter of our lives because of the unknown, or we may fear certain things, places, and situations. But amidst the fear, God promises never to leave us or forsake us. The phrase, do not Be afraid is written in the Bible 365 times. So we may fear certain things. We may fear places and situations. Okay, so I want to let you know right now, I want to let you know right now that it is not a sin to be afraid. It is not a sin to be afraid. Afraid. Now, if you're afraid, being afraid can cause you to sin. It can cause you to be, oh, I'm not, I'm, you know, hide your head and not, and, not, and not acknowledge the truth. Or to pretend like you didn't hear what you just heard. It can cause you to sin, but it is not a sin in itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you're afraid of something, that is a natural human response to situations in your life. Now, you can learn, like our soldiers in battle, even this day, they learn not to fear certain things or have certain automatic reactions to things that they see, hear, and smell. They react, but it's out of the training that they do this. Let me say it again. Our soldiers, when they go into battle, when they go into battle, they are trained to respond a certain way to things that all of us fear naturally. So they may fear it, but their training teaches them how to respond to things a different way because they are soldiers. We are soldiers. And in other words, we are disciples. We are apprentices. So when we get into a place or a situation where we do fear and you will fear and you have feared, your response to that fear is going to be different than the worldly response. Are you following me? You are listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth. Okay, do not be what? Afraid. Your response to that is your training. As you are training in righteousness, your response is key. Amen? Let me give you an example. Deuteronomy 
31. Deuteronomy 31, 7 through 8. Now, these are the words of Moses. Deuteronomy means the second law. The first law was given um, in the book of Exodus. And now Moses is at the end of his life, and he is uh, reiterating, explaining to the children of Israel what this means. And he is passing the mantle of responsibility to his apprentice, who is Joshua. It says this, verse 7, Then Moses called for Joshua, and all of, the, uh, and all of Israel watched. He said to him, be strong and courageous. Now, did he all of a sudden, did he like just pick Joshua up and say, okay, let me any, many, mighty, mo, catch a tiger on. The You're it. Come over here. Woo, me? No, Joshua had been by his side on the mountain leading by his side the whole time. So when he called Joshua, Joshua was ready because he had trained. You understand me? He wasn't trying to be something. He was trained to be. Be strong and courageous, Joshua, for you will lead these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors he would give them. You are the one who will divide it among them as their grants of land. So you're going to march into the land, and then when you get there, Joshua, you're the one that's going to divvy up the land to the different tribes. Understand? Here's our key verse. Verse 8. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Ah, here it is. For the Lord will personally go ahead of you like you have seen, Joshua. He will be with you. He will neither fail or abandon you. He is with you. Do not be afraid, for God is with you. He's never going to leave you. And if you don't believe that, what about Psalm 23? Do you believe that? Let me just read it to you. Psalm 23, this is a New Living Translation. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I can end it right there. We can go home, right? But let's go on. Verse 2. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing me honor to his name. Now, this version says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Even though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of what? Death. I will fear no evil. That's what that is saying. I like, to, I like to go in between, you know, the different versions in order to explain it to you because you see the significance of the words. Even when I walk. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me, even in the presence of my enemies. You're preparing the feast. Why should I be afraid? You honor me by anointing my head with oil so I can safely comb through my hair and there are no naps in there. It doesn't get tangled when I comb it. I'm smooth flowing. And then when it dries, it's like nice and silky. You know what I'm saying? Anoint my head. Now, I don't have much hair. But I feel it, man. We put that, I put the oil on my head. And I feel, oh, that feel good. Right, Eagle? Yeah, yeah that feel good. <laughs> Even in the gray. Don't talk about my gray like that. <laughs> my cup, it overflows with blessings. Verse 6, uh, this is the blessing. Surely goodness and unfailing love, surely goodness and mercy will pursue me some of my life. No, 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 no. All of my life, all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord when I get to heaven. Which includes what? Ah, 
the kingdom of God is now <laughs> and forever and ever and ever. We are in the kingdom. We will be in the kingdom. You see, God is always there. He's close to you, right? It says this. He's giving you rest. He's leading you. He's renewing you. He's guiding you. He's protecting you. He's comforting you. He's preparing you. And he is honoring you and himself. Oh, my goodness. What more do you need? I have everything I need. That's why I said we can stop it right there. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. Why should I be afraid? I don't need to be afraid. There are times, like I said, that you will be afraid. And being afraid is not a sin. It's your reaction to that fear that is the sin. That is the potential sin. If your reaction is good in your training, not your trying, but your training, then you have the victory and you have not sinned. There are times you, I mean, look. You got PTSD, right? Fear of what has happened in the past, right? And then you got the stuff that's going on right now, today, in your life. Oh, my goodness. What am I going to do? And then you got the future. <laughs> if, you, if the past and the present are, aren't, you know, fearful enough, what about your future? That's fearful, too. You will be afraid. It will happen. But the Lord will walk with you through it all. Amen. The Lord will walk with you what? Through it all. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Psalm 34, verse 19. This is the New King James Version. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of some of them. Out of many of them. Out of most of them. Out of all of them. All. All means all, and that's all all means. That's the Patrick, Pastor Chuckism. All means all, and that's all all means. Psalm 34, verse 19. Back to the New Living Translation. The righteous person faces many troubles. But the Lord comes to rescue each time. You see the difference between the two versions there. It's the same verse, but I, I like, that's why I read both of them. So there are many promises to us. There are many promises to us. But now let's look at Jesus before the cross. Let's look at Jesus before the cross. What did Jesus do? He asked the Lord, he asked the Lord, I'm going to present to you, I want you to consider, one of my mentors says that a lot, I want you to consider this, that Jesus was afraid, that Jesus feared. That's why I say that fear is not, it is not a sin. It is a natural response to situations. Jesus feared. He asked God the Father if there was another way. Is there any other way? Man, this looks painful and dreadful. I don't want to go through this. I mean, seriously, God. Great drops of blood, sweat coming down. He wasn't crying. There were only a couple of times. In the, the, he was sweating. He was, he was a little nervous, even though he told people, be anxious for nothing. But he was about to go through something that nobody in the whole world had gone through. And nobody will ever go through the torture that Jesus went through for us. And it was, it was ordained to be that way. Well, you think they thought about it? I can see the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and God the Father sitting around right now. All right, who's going? You know we got to save them. Because they're going to be in some stuff. Who's going? And the son says, I'll go. And you know it's going to be hard, the father says. Yes, I know. But I will be like them and I will go. Because I love them. 
So Matthew 26, verses 38 through 40, he says this. Jesus, he, Jesus, told them, his disciples, my soul is crushed. Uh-oh. My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Is that fear? Is that not fear? Well, that's, yeah, that's fear. I'm depressed. I'm sad. This is going to be, this is going to be terrible. And he asked them, please, guys, stay here and keep watch with me. Then he went a little farther and bowed his face to the ground, praying, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. And Jesus' training came in. He wasn't trying. He had been trained in righteousness. He was a fully human, fully God. Yet, I want your will to be done, not my will. I will go through this. I will do it. Amen? I'm going to invite Maria to come up. And I've changed the song a little bit. Uh, through it all. Instead of through it all, let's do um, take, my, my, take my hand. Precious Lord, take my hand. I'm not going to do a new song. <laughs> this song is, means a lot to me. I was thinking through it all, but I want you to understand that God is with you. And you can call on him. And he will hold you. He will take your hand. He will carry you through anything, anything that you are going through. So Jesus trusted God the Father. But even Jesus, being fully human and fully God, he was afraid. That's what it says. But he went through the trial. Jesus, and, and check this out. <laughs> Jesus is the only person in the world that had God the Father leave him, forsake him. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is not so with us. It is not that way with you. God is always there. The Holy Spirit lives in you. You are forever with the Lord, but you must choose to acknowledge his presence in your life. This is your superpower. He is your superpower. This is how we are empowered by the Spirit. Amen? I want you to listen to the words of this song. <clears throat> Precious Lord, and take my hand, lead me on. Let me stand, I am weak, I am tired, I am worn, through the storm. To the light, take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. Going to verse 3, it says this. 
when the darkness appears and the night draws near and the day is past and Precious Lord, and lead me home. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Do you want that for your life today? Let's just, as individuals, take this time to think of one thing that you need the Lord for. <laughs> now, you need the Lord for everything, but right now, what is at the top of your mind that you need the Lord? Go ahead, think about it. I got mine. I can't say it out loud, <laughs> but I got mine. Now, in your heart, in your soul, I want you to say, do not be afraid. He is with me. And we will go through this together. And I'm not going to try to do it. But Lord, help me to train to do this. And my natural reaction next time is going to be, Okay, you got this, God. Sometimes we have to just hand it over to him and say, I, mm -mm, I can't do this. You could do that too. He will take it. Hallelujah. May you pray that in today. May that be your prayer. Do not be afraid. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord grant you peace. The Lord this day make you into a disciple of his praise and glory. Not yours, but his. And show us how not to be afraid, but to follow him. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, amen. God bless you. See you next week.